joined now by Gary Chambers Jr. He is the candidate for Louisiana's second congressional district. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good, Ben. Thank you for having me, brother. Pleasure is mine. I've seen you across the internet. You've had viral videos. You're an outspoken person. Tell us how you went from um, the viral video that many people may have seen of you to running for Congress. Well, um, I've been a advocate here in the Baton Rouge area for uh, nearly a decade now, uh, pushing on a host of different issues from economic development, healthcare access, uh, as well as education issues. And I ran for office in 2019 and was unsuccessful uh, because I just cared about uh, the state of where things are and wanted to see change happen in my community. And when Representative Cedric Richmond decided to take a position with uh, President-elect Biden, some folks reached out and said they thought that I should consider this. It wasn't initially something that I was looking at, but uh, went into it with an open mind and launched an exploratory committee and raised over $100,000 through the okay. uh, exploratory process. And that gave me the confidence to say that we could do this. Uh, and just yesterday when we announced, we raised over $50,000 just on opening day. And so I'm excited. We've had 4,000 people contribute to this campaign at this point, which says that this is a people powered movement. Uh, and I'm just excited to be able to go out and touch the people of Louisiana and fight for change. Listen, you got me excited about your race already. Tell me about the second congressional district. Is it anything like the 21st in Florida? Uh, just tell me about that. So the second congressional district is a majority African-American district and it stretches over 10 parishes. We have 10, uh, we have parishes in Louisiana instead of counties. And mm -hmm. it stretches over 10 parishes from the capital city of Baton Rouge all the way uh, to the city that everybody loves, New Orleans. Uh, includes the River Parishes here. And so we went and touched all 10 parishes last week and we're gonna do uh, just that and work through this uh, process and touch every part of this district that we can because I really believe that the people of this district wanna see a progressive agenda that takes us from the 50th ranked state forward. Mm. Mm, absolutely. And again, yeah, no, it sounds exactly like many of the districts that I grew up living in, um, where it's it's a very thinly uh, gerrymandered district that you have to drive through 10 parishes. Now, I, I, I spent some time in Louisiana. You ever heard of the Washington Parish Fair by any chance? Uh, yes. up there, it's on the other side of Lake Pontchartrain, Covington, Franklin. So I know I know the area pretty well. And I know that's a lot of traveling. I know it that is. that's a lot of wear and tear on your team and on you. Uh, and, and that's not by circumstance, but you're having to fight inside of this type of district. That's a fact, man. You know, we, we literally had that conversation when we were driving uh, to St. Charles Parish. We were like, you know, they literally just put this in here. Right. Um, and it speaks, it speaks to the systemic issues that we know exist in this government. Right. The inequities that exist that that though black people make up 34 percent of the state of Louisiana, we only have one black congressman for our state. Um, and that's telling. Right. It's intentional. It's deliberate. And that's why we got to go to Washington to fight so that we can fight for the rights of people to have fair voting practices, to have fair districts drawn so that they can be represented e equitably. Mm. I see one of your models in life is to do good and seek justice. How do you address seeking justice in a unjust or unjust system, one like the gerrymandered district that you have to drive through 10 parishes to actually compete, but yet you're in that system and you have to use that system to fight against that system? Talk about that for me. So for me, it, that's the process, right? Whether we like it or not, it is the process. And if you're going to be an advocate, your advocacy has to turn into policy at some point and change that he, that impacts the lives of people. Um, and so I'm going to sit down and talk to people from every part of the party uh, and every other party, right? Because I just believe that if you have a data-driven conversation with people and you talk about the fact that Louisiana ranks 50 in the nation, we rank number 50 in crime, number 49 in opportunity. And mm. if we don't figure out how to increase the opportunities, we'll never decrease the crime and our state will never be as prosperous as it could be. And so I want to talk to people from every persuasion uh, in Louisiana and outside of Louisiana as we go uh, to Congress about how do we fix things in place is that we clearly recognize things are broken. And you can talk Republican policies all you want. My state is ran by Republican, a Republican legislature in the Senate and the House. And so what that tells me is that those policies aren't working. And when I go to Washington, I'm going to tell Republicans to their face, your policies don't work for the people in my state. And so mm. you can't justify uh, that we go down that road if I live in a state ran by Republicans that happens to rank 50 in the nation. Mm. 
Mm, that's powerful. Now, t- talk to me about like you personally and 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 your motivations. And because you know, when you get to a certain level and you're running this campaign, you know, you're participating in a system that some people are going to look at you and think, oh, oh, you shouldn't even be running for office. But but you're running and you're fighting and you have you have a drive to seek for love and justice and do good. What is your motivation? Well, I've got a ten year, eleven year old daughter. Uh, she just turned eleven. Uh, I've got an eleven year old daughter. It's named Zoe that I fight for every day. Uh, I've got family and friends that I fight for and the communities that I love, right? I grew up in uh, a majority black community. I grew up in schools where uh, that were, for me, good schools. I remember my teachers who uh, spent time with us and and, and poured into our lives. And I'm fighting for working class people like that, right? That, That are a part of the system that recognize that they deserve to live in communities that have grocery stores, that they deserve to live in communities uh, that have high quality of life and good jobs, right? I'm fighting because I come from these communities and understand what it was and the potential that we had that has not been reached because the government has just been inequitable when it deals with us. And so uh, I talk about do good and seek justice. That really comes from Isaiah 1 and 17, do good, seek justice help the widow, the orphan, and the oppressed. And so too long we have allowed conservatives to own the narrative of faith. Um, I'm a man of faith who believes that my faith leads me uh, to do good and seek justice for all people. But you knew I knew that already, right? <laughs> like we we never compared notes before, but I already knew, right? We yes. have that common language, and and it speaks to our ability to see the problem common, a common problem, and to have a similar solution with a similar inspiration. We have that common bond. How do you develop that bond with other people who aren't from our same kind of district? I think you just got to be willing to sit down and talk to people. You know, the the realities are while uh, there's so much partisan bickering back and forth. These are just regular people at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, I've talked to Republicans here in Baton Rouge who've helped us uh, fight to keep the zoo in North Baton Rouge, where on other issues we we completely disagree. And so we've got to be willing to sit down and have conversations with people. And some things we're going to disagree on and some things we're going to be able to work together on. But we've got to be willing to have a conversation. Mm, mm. And, and in that conversation, there has to be uh, two actors who are going to a- engage in good faith. Do you find that you can find people across the aisle who will engage in good faith with you? I think not everyone will, but but I'm an optimistic person, right? Uh, and so I step into things and look at the glass as half full rather than half empty, not naive to understanding where we are and what we're dealing with and the partisan politics that exist in our country, but hopeful and optimistic enough that there'll be some people in this in, in the Congress that are willing to have a conversation. Mm. And if they're not, then, you know, I'm about fighting for my people. Period. Right. <laughs> Period. Point blank. You know, tell everyone how they can get up with you, support your campaign. And if they want to volunteer, where should they go? They can go to chambersforcongress.com and you can sign up to volunteer. You can donate. Uh, We're going to be rolling out our platform in the next few weeks. We are aggressively going after this. We got 11 weeks to Election Day. This is a very short uh, runway, but I'm excited about it. And anybody who wants to support can go to chambersforchange.com, chambersforcongress.com. Uh, to to volunteer or donate. Yeah. When you get there, would you could do you consider yourself like uh, a potential squad member? Not that not, not that names matter, but sometimes you got to clan up. Sometimes you got to you know you got to squad up. I am I am a fan of the squad. That's what I'll say. And if they would have, <laughs> I would be uh, more than welcome to join them in fighting for the people. Well, I tell you what, we're going to do what we can to at least get your voice heard as much as we can. I think it's an important voice, and I appreciate you joining us, Gary Chambers Jr., who is running for the 2nd Congressional District. That race is in, uh, wait a minute, I mean, you said 11 11 weeks. That's right around the corner. It's in March. It's in March. How many people are in the race? I know we we were getting ready to get out of here, but is is the field really deep right now? How many people are in the race? There are three or four declared candidates uh, other than us, and and I'm excited to be able to have the opportunity to discuss the issues with them. And why do you stand out above them? I'm not a career politician. I'm a man of the people. That's what I'm talking about. And we can guarantee I I, I feel that. I feel that coming through this Al Gore's internet. Thanks again, (laughs) Gary Chambers, Jr. We appreciate uh, what you're doing there and best of luck on your race. Thank you, brother. Take care. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.